Hey there, welcome back. Manis here and today we have Dismantle and 15 tips and tricks for you how to best enjoy the game, all right? Minor, uh, just warning, there will be minor, minor, small spoilers. I will uh, avoid them as much as I can, but it's impossible without a little bit of them, okay? So first off, let's jump right to the point. Point number one is always have blue-eyed orb. This is something I already have in my inventory. This is how it looks like. And this is important. Why? Because don't run out of them, okay? Keep at least one in your inventory and you, in a moment you will understand why. But just keep an eye. If you don't have one or you have one left, really, really pay attention how and where to get more because yeah, more points coming up. Just This is the most important um, item and material you can have in this game that's the rest of that you will figure out yourself okay and why um this is something s close to that but yeah this is directly right sorry I'm, I'm just stupid uh do deadly transmissions first what it means is you will find such relays you will find them and you will have transmitters and deadly transmission is something that stops enemies from respawning otherwise you every time you touch a fireplace it will respawn all the enemies at first it feels cool because you get some minor loot out of them but other but actually no it's really bad so what i mean by having deadly transmissions first is whenever you enter new region go straight ignore absolutely everything else go straight to the uh this this relay actually transmission tower i think it's called link tower yeah and enable it and now you see to enable it you will require at least one of that orb so that's why you need that orb so entering new area you run straight to this uh, link tower get enabled this uh, deadly transmission then you can safely work in that area and while working the new area that's the thing try to get back your uh blue eyed orb so you can enter next area that's how it goes so that's the key part now the next one is where to get such orbs so yes first three points is around this one item so where to get them is from toms thumbs and bosses let me just, I'll try to, yes, no, I will disable everything else. Yeah, it doesn't work like that. I need something. So you don't have any spoilers. So, thumbs and also, where's the link towers? Yeah, that's, that, that, that's it. That should do the trick. So, thumbs are places, basically every area has one, so this is easy, you will find it. And where the, if you are here for advices, so this is advice. From the starting area, this is your first starting area right here, you start the game, that's where I just ran over to the first tower. Here is the cemetery. You need to go there, there will pop up a side quest that you need to do to be able to actually explore thumbs. This is right next, well, first area, you see the borders, second area, third, basically, but uh, there's no walls, nothing. So running here, you need to get there as soon as possible, then you will be able to actually get item that is required for these tomb explorations. And as you can see, I already revealed three places where to get those orbs, so you're fine. Okay, another place is bosses. Bosses you will not need to find yourself uh, where are they are, but that's another source where those orbs are coming from. There, there are more places where to put them as well, but without any spoilers, you will find them as well on your own. Point number four is upgrade your backpack, plant and shark. So I'm uh, trying to be vague a little bit at least, but as you can see, the backpack, I have already fully upgraded. That's why you see I have so many um, bars, the, the counts of boxes, so I can carry a lot of things. When you start, it is really a problem. So 
upgrading backpack will really re reduce a lot of time when you're going back and storing your items but not only that also you will find nah, you will find such tools i'm just showing the same that is in the title screen for the game this is blunt there are every weapon melee weapon goes either it's blunt either it's sharp and there are blunt weapons usually tend to have more um, usage you can destroy a lot of things with blunt weapons for example right and but there are some items that can only be gathered with sharp okay so upgrade your best sharp and best blunt weapon you will get more of them and basically the more you upgrade the more you are able to gather items remember this game is dismantled so everything yes if you're wondering why there is no house yes i dismantled every single all the house there's no house just just kitchen left okay so yes there will be a lot of dismantling and upgrading your sharp and blunt weapons allows you to dismantle higher level items right after the backpack upgrade so these are more most important three upgrades you need to uh need to check sorry went back point number five craft everything and here i think i will need to show you a little bit but yeah be aware we are focusing mostly on the part where we have trinkets so these are trink trinkets you see the icons but i'm not really revealing what they are what they do the simple for this is really s easy to explain you have five slots in total but those slots right right these slots they if you mouse over you see they open up only when you have particular amount of trinkets so you need to craft more trinkets and once you hit the threshold next trinket uh, is opening and this you will find this basically gives you quite amazing passive advantages so you want to unlock them as soon as possible that leads to the point craft everything even if you read the trinket and like eh, i'm not going to use that eh. craft it so you open the, the slot and this is not only about trinkets there will be a lot of items you at first you see like it doesn't seem like this suits for me basically the game is straightforward build everything okay and let's speed up um this is something uh, let me see where i can show you that I think it goes yeah you read the the, the I I just have a limited amount of space that's why I wrote XP loot space gather and all that why because we are talking about skills once you level up you go back to your fireplace sit down and you will be presented with choice I'm showing you this is not a secret uh, this is basically in order how I got them but now rethinking all of that you have quite a lot of possibilities to, to to choose from my now that i'm rethinking you need to focus in my opinion first always first you will as you can see i have picked fast learner so that gives you more xp from everything then next one would be for loot uh oh, sorry not that this one hoarder uh which gives you more xp from storing materials remember this game is all about dismantling and getting uh, resources so you will have a lot of xp from storing materials so and in this game basically everything is locked bef uh, uh, lock after the, the level ups basically the higher levels you have the more items you have the more items you have the more you can dismantle new resources everything about the level up so as fast if you can boost your leveling up speed that quite drastically improves the your performance and, and fun and everything so then the third one is uh pack rat that allows you to get well carry more items around so you can store them not so frequent then absolutely do not 
uh, thing gather is something um, something bad or, or something to avoid, it gives you a chance to get double the items. When you have fully upgraded full gatherer, you every time you gather anything, you gather two pieces. Trust me, this boosts quite a lot. So that would be already like the first. Then, as you can see, I think the level five is the yeah the five is the maximum. Every single one of them can be upgraded five times. So eventually you will still and i still at the end picked up the fighter so just boosting damage but in my opinion it's not as important as all the previous mentioned and the last not, but not least this is the later in the game introduced uh turrets i also picked up before i actually had any turret but i just thought ammo capacity in the reload speed 50 percent that's quite a lot so it seems a good thing to pick and i was right and then the rest of that, uh, I will just give you my uh, my my thoughts. I thought this builder will be valuable, ended up absolutely not. You have a limit that you can build right away, and this extra plus ten, I don't know what the hell are you, you should be doing to 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 hit the limit. So. Now rethinking, I would pick anything else but the builder. Okay, so that's about the skills. What we have um, next is also yeah a little bit giving you a heads up what's going on in the game. I will show you from the beginning, from the first tower. Here, as you can see, we have a plant farm, and here we have. These are two locations you will find really fast, but the thing you need to know is um, you can grow things, right? Anything you pick up, you can basically put down, you will get the items, you will craft them, no worries. But the thing is, what the game does not tell you is be prepared. Basically, gather, farm everything. And these are the <laughs> spots where you can make a farm field and then plant your items afterwards come back and gather in huge quantities remember if you previously i mentioned to pick up um experience gained from loot being stuck in your box so together with farming a lot of items basically you can grow in both fields if you want to and it takes some time you basically plant something and after a day or something you need to come back different items grow at different speed but anyways last but not least why i mentioned tomatoes uh, i will just yeah i will need to go to here anyways okay we'll go to the next point because tomatoes tomatoes has some one extra cool thing I like about them. So, point number eight is about recipes. So I need to quickly jump here and show you tomato soap. That's the only thing I'm going to show. I don't think you can manage to get those recipes without it. But anyways, see what happens. See what happens here. It, I can get health, which means if I have three tomatoes, Anytime, anywhere I cook, well, I need this this stove. But it's basically in every building, in every city, you will find them quite often. You can heal yourself. And this is some things that basically when you have, let's say, 300 tomatoes, 300 heals. That's a lot without going back to, to the for bandages or anything else. So that's my favorite thing. But the point eight itself is about recipes. Why? Because you see how many we have and they are not just for food. Every time you find a new recipe and mostly they are in kitchens and are in boxes, boxes secured by some more enemies or, or higher tier enemies or something like that, okay? but. Another place where often okay, the recipes are dropped are in kitchen. Whenever you get a new recipe, once you craft one time this particular recipe with all the ingredients needed, you get the benefit of the recipe. Most of the time it's health, but there's also critical damage, speed, uh, heat resistance, 
all the items basically the dodge the dodge speed so much so many and there are so many recipes so basically the game quite quite a lot of the, the playtime revolves around recipes i would say you get the bonuses and and, and uh, from trinkets from items uh, you, you wear few of them but the recipes that's just another level okay so be aware of that and now you understand why i advise to farm because whenever you find a recipe and it says ah you know you need 10 corn five potatoes if you don't have any or you find more of such recipes you will end up and dry out your resources your your um, food resources right so if you farm and whenever you find some item let's say i don't know the potato you have five potatoes plant it because you will gather more and that's how you can multiply and end up as a potato king okay otherwise if you immediately cook it ah you're out of tomatoes again you need to find it somewhere right all right um dodge dodge or knockback this is something um switching gears to the fighting fighting is i'd say not hard in this game but idea is simple you either can dodge from enemy attacks you will find sometimes it works ridiculously sometimes it doesn't work seems but another way how to bypass it is by knockback for this particular thing i need to show you this item this is a trinket that adds knockback strength it is currently for me upgraded th three times but even if the first time first upgrade first level it's enough what it does it does every time you do a hit you push enemy a little bit back and you will find how this is super strong in this game because as soon as there's distance between you and enemy enemy if enemy do, does the swing it will miss right so you will be safe so either you dodge either you have a knockback effect but those two things i'd say is most valuable and, and most important for the combat itself and the last not last but 10 point not point number 10 only but ranged fights and by range i don't mean enemies as such but there you will face things as turrets like human-made turrets that guard the position so for that my advice is fight with ranged you will find items and discover yourself the ranged but the idea is when the tur turret starts targeting you will you will have a laser point to you it doesn't mean it shoots it means don't get any closer but you can get as close to get things ranged attacks that's one way another way turrets have um wide not wide but a range of of fire if you approach them from behind they are basically they, they can't do nothing they always have a weak spot but there are sometimes they are positioned in a corner or somewhere where you can get from behind so both options are there uh last points are quite simpler is don't die twice that is quite simple oh, i don't have my corpse but whenever you die you drop everything there so you respawn your main point is get back and retrieve all the items because all the things you have gathered on you will be in your corpse if you die second time the first corpse is gone basically you can lose absolutely valuable items if you pick them out and and die twice okay you don't want to do that if you follow all my devices this shouldn't be the problem but just keep an, an, an eye for it sit at the campfire this is something uh yeah if the point number two point number two was to enable deadly transmission it means you sit at the fireplace like i did and no enemies are spawning otherwise if you don't have deadly transmission now all the enemies that were spawning around would be respawned why i say set because the game logic is simple when you die you do not respawn at the closest fireplace you respawn at the last one you sat at so whenever you find a new campfire there are quite a lot of them you basically enable it lit it right it starts firing 
it doesn't count as sitting next to it. So that's the thing. You let it, you think it's fine, you drop your items and just run somewhere and die. Then you will respawn in the last fireplace where you actually were sitting at. So this minor thing but absolutely destroys every fun if you suddenly respawn three fireplaces before and like, what the hell? It's half of the map you need to run. Point number 13 is uh, sleep process of time. This is something also I just, yeah, let me show you. It's, it's here. I can sleep. I have upgraded. Uh, you need to upgrade this thing for more hours. If you pick more hours, that's the time processes. Remember the point about farming? When you put things in the ground, now I think almost all the anything I put in a farm, after 12 hours it will be fully ready to, to gather. And you can't sleep uh, non-stop. There is a period uh, of, of cooldown before you can sleep again. And I'm saying this to give you advice, there will be more uses of it, but Basically, whenever there's something you are waiting for, if you sleep in the time, it fast forward and everything that the growth process and everything will be done in a matter of seconds and you can harvest your things and plant new. Anyways, you get the idea. Point number 14 is check map, check map before leave. So this is something uh, if you follow my guides and run to the link towers, enable the transmission, basically whenever you enable it, it will also reveal the map. And by reveal, I mean, you will have a fog. You don't, I don't know what is beneath it, but I can see still uh, there are, as you can see next, um, how it's called. I can't get up there, right? This is blocking area. I see there is a wall. I can get past it. I see. Uh, so basically, you can explore and make a educated guess. Can you go there? Can you cross it? Or, for example, yes, you can see there's a huge wall around it. So if you have revealed the map, even with the fog of war, you know where you can pass and where you totally cannot, for example. Right. So before running in some direction, because you see a link tower somewhere, you can or from the link tower, you can make an estimate if it's traversable, okay? The map is quite uniquely built. It's it's quite tunnel based. So there will be a lot of limitations. That's, that's as far as I can tell you, okay? <laughs> so uh, here I will give you one more. Um, time boxes are stupid. And by stupid, I mean, I will explain what they does Time it great. Okay, fine, fine, fine. That's how, that's it. So they are marked like this. And I will explain so you know how to use them. Of course, uh, they are valuable. But the thing is, time and crate means whenever how it, how it goes is whenever you sit at the camp, it basically resets time. It, it sets to zero, right? Whenever you uh, stand up from the camp, Counter and timer starts, and it's uh, and basically for every single box it's the same. Now I can't get to this box, and it actually it's already gathered. You have limited time. This box, for example, I don't know, 20 seconds. In 20 seconds, you need to run here and pick out the loot. When the 20 seconds run out, boom, you can't open it. So basically, you need to go back to the uh, fireplace sit down again and run again. For example, this is impossible to gather because it's actually from totally a different place. But for example, this box, yeah, this box can be gathered. So whenever you find such box, what you need to do is, obviously you, you haven't run directly to it. You need to find closest fireplace. Oh, I have them disabled, I think. Yes, obviously. So you see, this is the closest, I think. So what you need, what I would need to do, get there, sit at this fireplace, then um, stand up immediately and the fastest way possible, this, these are the doors, run through it without any interruption, without going behind or there are enemies just ignoring them. 
as fast as I can and usually there are one or two seconds left and then you open it and then basically there are materials in there. That's it. That's the whole box. Those materials are maybe valuable sometimes. I, I don't know if they're random, but now you know how to gather it, okay? Otherwise, it's just a bit confusing. Game doesn't explain it fully, but yeah, that that's it. That's why I call them stupid, because there's just materials in it. And it's quite annoying that you need to do back and forth from camp. Anyways, that's just me. And basically, yeah, 15 points. I will just add a little bit more, because you're such a great uh, viewers. 25 minutes long video, Jesus Christ. The guy can't just shut up. But run that is in um, system. In system options, my advice just for controls, hug the run so you can just hit the button and forgot, forget about it. You will always run until it doesn't. But anyways, it's just easier the game, okay? Then for camera distance, set it to the maximum so you see things otherwise you can't and the last is just if you really are not a big fan of those emojis you can actually disable them otherwise they don't have any additional value they're just annoying maybe for you maybe not i left them because eh, i don't give a damn and that's it that's one extra point for you guys but uh dismantle as as far as i can show you Yes, I have finished the game absolutely, not fully, I don't have full medals and everything. I don't know if I will do it. It's quite, quite repetitive, repetitive. Anyways, you need to do the things over and over again. <laughs> Sorry, my English is just so rusty. Anyways, uh, yeah, and as you can see, basically, I ended up the game with level 54, so you can count how many uh, level ups you have, how many um, skills you can choose to upgrade and, and all that, but yeah, that's just them. And the rest of that I'll leave for you for exploration. The game is quite, the map is quite big, there's a lot of things to gather, dismantle everything, gather everything, there will be side quests, more interesting, less interesting, bosses, some interesting encounters, quite cool game. That's why I'm making video about it. I tend to avoid games I hate. Well, I made those videos as well. Anyways, with these tips, you should be totally fine. And yeah, the biggest selling point, dismantle. You can dismantle everything. At the beginning, no. Later on, when you see where it's going, you're like, ooh, I can destroy everything, you say. Yes, 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 you can. <laughs> Anyways, thanks guys for watching. I will meet in other videos. Sorry, took some time, but these are the points I wanted to give across to you. We'll meet in other videos. Cheers.